Clain stands on the road from Nace to Kilcock in North County Kildare, near to an ancient crossing point on the River Liffey. In order to guard this river ford, the Anglo-Normans built a Morton Bailey castle. Then in the 13th century, a Franciscan friary was established known as Clain Abbey. This ruin is near to the probable site of an earlier Celtic monastery founded in the 6th century. Despite the fact that these historical relics are military and ecclesiastical, Clane seems to have functioned during medieval times mainly as an agricultural village and small rural service centre. During the first half of the 20th century, Clane's role remained the same. With decline in the rural craft industries such as blacksmithing and the diminishing farm labour force, Clane's population dwindled. It had fallen to one third of the pre-famine population when in 1946 it reached a low of just 112 people. Then the continued existence of Clane as a village must have seemed in doubt. The way children are dressed going to school now, in comparison to our days. The food they've been they're eating now in comparison with those days. They have such little work to do now compared to what we had to do. People were, they, they weren't well educated at that time. That no, no motor cars, very few had even bicycles. Uh, they walked to the walks, maybe maybe walk 10 miles or 15 miles to the walk and back. And I have seen my father walking to Nace, and that's about five miles. And I've seen my mother driving a donkey and cart all the way. At that time, you couldn't go in a donkey and cart now. But there was very little employment. Slangowitz Wood College was about the only place. They kept about 24 men, I think, on the farm. And and then they had about eight men in the garden, and, uh, and they had about, I suppose, 50 men altogether. Well, the people you knew at that time, you know, were vast different to the people you know now. They were more sociable to me. You know, you meet the people now, but you don't know them. And you'd be looking at them all your life, and you wouldn't know them. The population of Clane began to rise slowly in the 1950s and 60s. At the 1971 census, it was 600, and subsequent increase brought it to about 2,000 in 1983. This represents a growth of almost tenfold within a period of 20 years, a dramatic contrast with the previous downward trend. The growth of population has been largely the outcome of the addition of some 400 new houses to the original village. After an earlier small county council scheme, by far the largest housing estate was begun at Loch Bollard in the late 1960s. This was the first private development and comprised 150 houses. The estate was and still remains quite detached from the village proper. Next in size is a council estate of 50 houses. They are urban type estates, contrasting with the previous housing of the village. Other new housing has been in smaller groups and in dwellings of individual design. The growth in housing was reflected in the village core in changes in its shops and services, change in their number, size and nature. As in other rural villages, the traditional businesses had been general grocery shops and pubs. These remain, though expanded. In addition, there are many specialist shops, which indicate the change towards town status. There are 27 shops and also services such as banks, building society, insurance, hairdressing and dry cleaning. They employ about 100 people. The services in Clane in the 50s were nearly non-existent. When I was growing up, there was literally only three pubs, maybe a few uh, huckster shops, and that was it. And we existed, I suppose, in those days, and we didn't realise we were missing anything, I suppose. Then I'd say the turning point came with the advent of two dynamic principals to both the Boys National School, Mr Lynch, and Mother Perpetua to the convent here next door. From that moment on, more people seemed to come into Clane. And some years later, about two years later, Loch Ballard Estate was built, and I think that was the turning point. For, uh, for once in our lives, we had extra people, people coming into Clane who were not natives of Clane. The advent of these extra people into Clane meant that Clane had to expand. We had to get new shops, we had to get new services, and in order to make it self-sufficient. And this we did. I opened my pharmacy, I expanded as I wanted it, and we had got doctors, we have two doctors here in Clan now. We have hardwares, we have every type of shop. I think it's practically self-sufficient. The only shop which might be missing might be a large furniture store. 
While the shopping and service functions of Clane have expanded greatly, a large proportion of village residents also travel for shopping to the adjacent larger towns of Nace and Newbridge and to Dublin. There has been no manufacturing in Clane in 1970, but some development has occurred since. The first and largest industry is a meat factory, which employs nearly 40 people. The plant supplies supermarkets throughout the country. Other smaller industries have been established since the mid-1970s, while national manufacturing was static or declining. These industries include clothing, joinery, prefabricated buildings, engineering, electronic and electrical components, glue and printing. They are located on the outskirts of the village and in a cluster in Marron Court off the main street. In all, there are nine industries employing 85 people. In addition to local employment in shops and manufacturing, there has been substantial growth in education with 60 teachers in Clane schools. Other employment is in the building and construction industry and in a private nursing home. In all, there are about 300 non-agricultural jobs in and around Clane. Some of the people in these jobs do not live in the village itself, but travel from surrounding rural areas and adjacent towns. It's obvious that the dramatic growth of Clane has not been based primarily on employment within the village. Two-thirds of the workforce commute to employment elsewhere, principally in Dublin. Others travel to Nace, Newbridge, the Curragh and other adjacent towns. Thus, the growth of Clane has been mainly as a dormitory settlement within the expanding Dublin and eastern metropolitan region. As only one-fifth of the residents were born in Clane and its vicinity, why then should they have come to live here? Well, I was born in Dublin. Uh, I lived most of my life in Drimna. And the reason I moved to Clane is I got married and I liked to live in the country. So one of the main attractions here was uh, the price of the house to begin with. But the other things was that there was a national school a secondary school. There were a number of other uh, amenities around, like uh, golf course, tennis clubs, and uh, any kind of shops that you needed in the village. We liked very much. At first, it was very, very strange, you know. I was used to getting on a bus, going into town, looking at the shops, and uh, I found it very strange when I had to, um, you know, I was kind of here all day long. Then once my first baby was born, I got to know all the girls on the estate and, you know, we became good friends and everyone was, you know, kind and helpful. And, you know, when you have children, you get to meet more people. And I always found the people in Clane very nice and friendly. Well, I came from Dublin originally, but 11 years ago, we returned to Ireland from London and we were looking for a house. We found at that time housing in Clane was relatively cheap, so that was the real reason we came. But another reason was a similar house in Dublin would have been in a big housing estate and we didn't want the children to grow up in that environment. Although there were the strong attractions of housing and village life, Clane, like other rapidly expanding settlements, was not without growth problems. Some difficulties and deficiencies remain. The chief disadvantage is the cost of travelling to and from Dublin, which I do uh, three or four times a week. It's expensive and it's also very time consuming. Uh, when you do it a number of times a week, it's time consuming. But against that, there are a lot of advantages. What we do need now would be a dentist and I'd like to see a swimming pool for the children, maybe when it's a village, you know, can afford it. The major problem is public transport. It's very difficult to get to Dublin or to get anywhere, unless you have two cars, because most of the husbands work in Dublin. So you have only two buses in the morning and one coming back at lunchtime. So you're really caught here. If you had a child sick, you wanted to go to hospital or something, you want to have a good neighbour. We believe that Clane is, is probably unique uh, in, in that it's the only uh, town or, or village in Ireland that has no footpaths. And over the last 10 years, uh, traffic on the roads has increased very, very dramatically. 
and in fact uh, about 10 of our young people have been killed uh, along the roads in and around the village and we have been campaigning very intensively with the county council to get footpaths in Clayton and better lighting. Traffic hazards have been increased by dispersed development as in a ribbon of different types of houses some distance out the Dublin Road. While the local planning authority has had the general objective of ordered and compact expansion, such permissions have been granted on appeal. The first and major breach of the Clane plan occurred in 1974 when the minister granted permission for a development one mile from the village, despite previous refusal by the county council as a most objectionable case of urban sprawl. Efforts are being made to restrict dispersed houses to minor roads and cul-de-sacs. There the traffic hazard is reduced and the visual harm to the countryside less obvious. Yet the high costs of service provision, the pollution consequences and the harmful effects on farming remain. However, ribbon and open country development is much better controlled in County Kildare than in most other counties. Well, this map here represents the areas in Clay where people have come to live in the last 10, 15 years. It's as young as that. And we have about seven or eight housing areas. And these housing areas are, create a problem in the sense that boys and girls who mingle freely with each other in the schools now find they're separated from each other unless they travel a main road, which has the equivalent traffic problem now as the, the dual carriageway had 10 years ago. So it's a highly dangerous business for little children to be running along a public main road without any path in order to mix, to mix with their friends. So they're inclined to stay within these little housing areas uh, in the after school hours. Despite the detached developments and a high turnover rate in home ownership at first, there has been considerable social integration in Clain. In many commuter villages, there have been difficulties of integration between the old and new residents because of their differing backgrounds and ages and the physical separation of the new housing from the old village. The community council in Clane, they're active in uh, looking for new members, especially from people like myself who've moved into Clane. And I feel that the work that they do around the community involving local people and uh, people who have moved into the area, it breaks down any barriers between them. We feel, uh, or don't think we're wrong in this, that we have achieved a, a, a pretty high degree of integration between the, the, the new people coming into the town uh, and those that were um, there previously. Um, we have created a, a climate of cooperation in the town. Oh, I found it very friendly. As a matter of fact, when I came down here first, I couldn't get used to people, you know, when you'd passed them on the street. Everybody said hello to you, whatever day, New Year or not, or nice day or bad day or whatever. And you found after a while, when I went back up home and I'd be going to shops with my mother, I was inclined to say hello to everyone I met because I had got into the habit. But I've never, f I've always found a very friendly village. The local community here, they received us very well, I'd say. We, people who came in put a lot into this community, but the people who are here didn't resent that. You know, we worked together very well. And as a result of that, we have all of these amenities now. Since the last 20 years, there's an awful lot of people have moved in, and I think that they've improved clean and, and uh, everywhere an awful lot, and the beautiful homes, and they're all a very nice crowd, and the, the book wonder for the young people to play in. I think they've gone on very well, from, from what I can see anyway, all around about me. They've gone on very well, and there's a good, good deal of them here now today, uh, members of this Evergreen Society. Some of the major problems of rapidly expanding commuter settlements relate to population growth occurring ahead of the necessary infrastructure of services and facilities. The problems in Clane applied in particular to schools, as related by Pat Lynch, principal of the boys' school. When I came to Clane in 1966, there were just two small schools with 80 children and three teachers in each. Um, today, we have 700 children attending primary school 
and uh, 500 attending post-primary school. We coped with the problem basically by erecting prefab classrooms uh, to the extent that in 1980 we found ourselves with 40 prefab classrooms, um, 1,200 children, uh, 50 teachers, and still no permanent uh, school buildings apart from the five or six old rooms which were here since um, 1839. As far back as 1970, the Department of Education had acknowledged the need for three new schools in Clean, two primary and one post-primary. Sister Perpetua was principal of the post-primary school at the time and a member of the presentation order was uh, working hard to get the uh, post-primary off the ground. Um, local finance committee had been formed locally to collect funds. Um, a site had been purchased and paid for. Um, a number of groups and individuals had been busy uh, visiting government, various government offices and lobbying various people at the time. So we had been waiting patiently through the 70s, um, the early 70s, mid 70s, uh, until finally in 1980 nothing uh, had happened still. And um, I think it came to a head in, in the summer of 1980 when the parents got a bit impatient and um, got onto the streets. And um, in November of that year, 1980, um, the local builder, John Connolly, was finally given the go ahead and he moved onto the site in November. And um, the great day for Clane arrived in June 1982 when the two new schools were officially open. The Church of Ireland school buildings were already large enough to accommodate a doubling of pupil numbers. There are now 70 pupils on rolls. Yeah! Near to Clane is Clongos Wood, the Jesuit boys' boarding school, centred in the medieval Castle Brown. There had been no other second level education in the village until 1963. Then a presentation convent secondary school grew out of the girls' primary school, beginning with seven students. Four years later, the school became co-educational and growth was rapid. The school has now transferred from the mass of prefabs to its new buildings as a community school. The educational explosion clearly demonstrates the growth of Clane. The fact that growth problems in Clane have been less than in many expanding settlements around Dublin is due in part to a slowdown in development in the mid and late 1970s. This was enforced by a lack of sewerage facilities and was related also to the greatly increased costs of commuting and to recession. The slowdown afforded an opportunity for services and facilities to catch up with development. It also provided a settling in period and it gave time for realization of the need for properly planned and slower development. Another reason why Clane has been comparatively successful in lessening the growth problems is community action. Clane was undergoing expansion and many new people were coming in and apart from that it was a rather quiet backwater little place and neglected in many ways with very bad facilities even for the population that was in it so people were anxious to improve standards in Clane and then again we um, efforts the church it representative elect elected community councils such as uh, is recommended by Winton Atira and in fact operates in, 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 in quite a number of towns around the country it's really the only basis for uh, giving uh, expression to, to the will of the people locally the community action which has been so important in the development of Clane up to the present is likely to be all the more vital in the future Clain, as you see, is a, is a little town, a little village, right beside the River Liffey. 
future expansion in Clane might bring in, we hope, some facilities given to the people of Clane and the children of a large park and also approach to the river itself. We must be the only town on the River Liffey that has no access as a people to the banks of its own river. I know that if the main sewerage scheme of North Kildare is linked up with Clane, we could very well be in for the maximum notal number of houses, which would be 3,000 houses, say over the next 15 or 20 years, all depending upon this recession and the rest of it. We could not cope with 3,000 houses, and neither do the people want 3,000 houses, from what I know. They want a moderate development that will allow them to integrate with a new input of population. Secondly, our schools are not built to take this extra population. Our schools are really built to maintain a uh, developing, slow developing community. So we'd have a, a major schooling problem ahead of us all over again. And the parish simply would have to run away from that. We couldn't face it. And then the church itself, we have one big church in the parish. Yeah, I don't think we could put in another 300 multiplied by two, 600 people. I don't know where we'd put an extra 600 people into that church on a Sunday. And then, then there is the whole question of the youth employment that would be uh, come in with that again, repeating the old question. You bring in families, you're able to have to educate them, you have to recreate them, and then you have to employ them. We have no infrastructure, even on the map in Clain, to cope with youth employment. The pace and nature of future development will be critical. A survey of Clane residents showed that more than one half of people wanted no further growth with the remainder equally divided between those who didn't mind and those who wished for more growth. I feel that this type of thing, uh, the small industries, is the actual thing that the country should be looking for at the moment. I believe that the large conglomerates are in more danger of collapsing, whereas the small industries with a very small workforce don't seem to have the same pressure on them. And I believe that there are other people in Clan who would possibly have ideas uh, of their own and if they had the facilities would go along and manufacture some little products themselves. To provide employment locally for even the present school population would necessitate the creation of 100 extra jobs each year. In the absence of such an attainment, commuting and or unemployment will increase substantially. Community action, enterprise promotion and self-help must extend to economic affairs for employment provision is going to be the great problem facing claims.